Welcome. In this video, I'm going to provide an example of how you can take location data from Wikidata and map it inside an R Shiny app. For the data, we will use the location of where ships have been wrecked off the coast of Scotland and we will create this map. To do this, we are going to do three things. We will use a Wikidata query to gather the data, write two lines of R code to transfer the data, and then plot the locations on a map in an R Shiny app. Simple. Let's get started. To begin with, I am going to provide you with the code required to pull the data from Wikidata. In a previous video, I demonstrated how to set up the query to gather the data required for this project. So if you'd like to understand the code in a bit more depth, please check out that video. I will provide a link to that video above and in this video's description. In a browser window, type in v.wiki forward slash 4ova. The query will run to pull together the data required. As you can see, our data is made up of four different categories. We have ship, we have coordinates, we have Canmore and we have ship label. I will explain more about these columns shortly. For the time being, if you go down to the bottom of your screen in the left hand corner, you should see an item saying Wikidata query service. And if you click on that, you will find the code required for our project. We are using a language called Sparkle to create our data set. We have four columns. The first column that we create to ship creates a link to the Wikidata page from which the information is being pulled. Coordinates provide us with the coordinates of where it's considered that the ship was wrecked. Canmore, now that's an identifier number. And what we will do when we come to do our map is we will want to give the user the option to link to the record either in Wikidata or directly to Canmore's website. And Canmore is part of Historic Environment Scotland. And on Canmore's website, the user will get to see a lot more information, typically about the ship that's been wrecked. Ship label is just the name of the ship. Let's head over to our studio and get started. In our studio, we go to File, New File, and we're going to do Shiny Web App. I am going to call my web app um, Ship rex map you can call it whatever you you desire and i'm just going to create it first thing i'm going to do before i start any coding is make sure that this app is going to work so the first thing i do is click run app and the app should load with some default data displaying but a point to note during this video is that when your app is running, you will see down at the bottom in your console that it says it's listening. When we stop listening, it will go back to the command prompt. So we will close our app. At the top of my app, I'm going to put in a description to state why we're creating this app. It's a project to map the, the location of ships wrecked off the coast of Scotland. We're going to get rid of all the other stuff that's sat just beneath it. We don't need any of that. We need to leave in the library shiny because we are using that. We're no longer going to draw a histogram, so let's just take that out. We'll just leave it as define UI for application. Our application title, we are going to still want a title. So we're going to delete out what's there just now. 
and we're going to add in ships wrecked off the coast of Scotland. I'm going to get rid of this middle section because we don't want any of the old diagrams to appear. So we're going to delete it out. And the place that you stop the deletion is just before the last closing bracket. So we've got the opening here and we've got the closing here. In this next bit here, again, we are not drawing a histogram, so we're going to remove that. And we're not going to be plotting the diagrams that were there previously either. So let's get rid of this middle section here. So again, you should just have your open curly bracket, closing curly bracket. And essentially with an RShiny app, you have three sections. You've got the use and interface, you've got the server section where you put all your logic, and then you're telling it to run the application. If you would like to know more about these sections, I will put a link in the video description to a source which I have found helpful in this regard. Above library shiny, back up at the top, I'm going to insert a new comment and I'm going to say here load packages. And in this section, what I'm going to do is install various different packages that we'll need for this project. Now, if you've not got the packages installed, you will need to install them for this project to work. Installing packages, if you're not familiar with it, is just very simple to do. All you ever need to do is go across to here, press install, type in the name of the pack and press the install button. So Shiny is our app and we need to bring in other packages. So I'm going to come in with library. We need to bring in the Wikidata package to allow us to bring in the data from Wikidata. So we write in here wiki data query service R. It's the one I want. We also need to bring in our map. And we're going to use Leaflet as the source of our map. Again, plenty of resources online with regards to Leaflet and I will put a link to it in the video description. So we type library Leaflet. So just as a very quick recap, Shiny's our app, Wikidata query service R is to gather the data and Leaflet is to aid us plotting it on a map. Now we're going to bring in the data. So underneath library leaflet, I'm going to write another comment saying load data. We are going to put our data into a data frame, which I will call shipwrecks. And then we need to feed in. We have to tell shipwrecks that it is a data frame. And then we need to tell it that it needs to query wiki data another opening bracket and inside our brackets here we're going to do single quotes. We're going to go back to Wikidata and we're going to copy and paste our code into our. So I'm copying and then in between the single quote marks here I paste that code. Let's see what happens now when we run our app? That's great, our app has loaded. Notice there is nothing plotted yet on our app because we haven't yet set up the map and we haven't told it to plot the data points on a map. But we know that so far what we've done with our code hasn't damaged our app. So let's close the app. Now, typically, if you were using an R script, once you've loaded a data frame, you would see it across here in the environment section. And as you can see with a shiny app, that doesn't happen. You don't get to see your data set in the environment. Therefore, at the moment, to help us make our changes and make sure that our data is going to come correctly into the app, I'm going to set up a separate R script just for us to practice our code in. And then once we're happy with our code, we will transfer it back across to the app. So we go back up to file, new file, our script. Back to my app, copy 
from load data down to the end of my data section and I'm going to put it into my R script. At the top, I need to remember to bring in my Wikidata package. So we are library, Wikidata query service. We highlight or control alt R, whichever you prefer and run the script. You can now see the data frame in the environment section. It contains four columns, and 23,770 rows. If you click on shipwrecks, it will load and you can see the contents now of the columns. You can see that ship contains a URL and if you were to copy that URL and go to a browser window and paste it in, you will get the Wikidata page for that ship. In this case, our one is called fly. The next column is the coordinates. A point to note is the first set of numbers you see relates to longitude and the second set relates to latitude. Canmore is an identifier number. And if we go back to the fly example, which we just loaded in our browser, and if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you will see the Canmore identifier. And if you were to click on this, it will take you to Canmore's website. And here you will find more information about the ship that's been wrecked. Whilst we're here, we're just going to have a quick look at the makeup of the Canmore URL because we'll need that later. The number 124901 that's the unique identifier, which we saw back on our Wikidata page. And this number changes depending on the ship. Whereas the earlier part of the URL always remains the same. We will come back to that later, but we're going to need that format set up. And the last column here, ship label, is just the name of the ship. I've gone back to my R script and I'm going to make a few changes to my data frame. The first thing I'm going to do is split the coordinates column into longitude and latitude. In the coordinates column, what we'll need to do is get rid of point, the opening bracket and the closing bracket. Then we're going to split the column in two, taking advantage of the fact that there is a space between longitude and latitude. So back in our R script, to get rid of the point, opening bracket, closing bracket, we are going to say shipwrecks, which is the name of our data set. And then we're going to tell it to go to column coordinates, feed in, g sub, opening brackets, opening double quotes, open square bracket, and then we type in point, open, bracket, close bracket, close our square bracket. But we don't want to substitute it with anything at all. So all we're doing is a set of double quote marks, nothing in between them. Say that it's going to be for shipwrecks coordinates. Press run. If you go back to shipwrecks now, you should see that point in the opening bracket and closing bracket have disappeared. Excellent. Now we're just going to split our column. To help us do this, we are going to use the package called tidier. So we run that line to load the package. Go underneath our existing code and type in shipwrecks separate. Shipwrecks, our data set, comma, and the column we want to separate. So that's call equals, and it's the coordinates, comma, into equals C open brackets, 
open double quotes and in between these double quotes we'll put the name of our first column which is longitude. We'll come outside our double quotes and put a comma, double quotes again and say latitude. Come outside our double quotes, outside our closing bracket, put a comma, sep equals because it's where we're going to separate it, putting in double quote marks and in between these double quotes we're going to put a space because we want to separate our column whenever we see a space. Run our code, check that it's worked by clicking on shipwrecks. We can see we've got a column for longitude and for latitude. That looks good. Let's go back to our R script. What we want to do now is have a look at our data types in our data frame. Because when it comes to using longitude and latitude on a map, we need to make sure that they're numerical. So across in shipwrecks, if you just click the drop down arrow, we can see that longitude and latitude are currently classed as characters. So we're going to change them to numeric. And to do that, it's very straightforward to do. All we do is type in shipwreck, the name a uh, dollar sign, name of our column, which is longitude, read in as dot numeric, open brackets and inside the brackets all we say is shipwrecks dollar longitude that's all we need to do to make it numeric click run and as you can see across at the side now it's changed to num we need to do the same for latitude so shipwrecks dollar latitude and into that we're going to feed in as dot numeric shipwrecks dollar latitude and that'll change that one again click run and as we can see across at the side they are now numbers next thing we need to deal with is creating our canmore url if you look at the moment the canmore is sat as a number but for our URL, we are going to pass in a fixed string at the start. So we need a string to be added onto it. Therefore, we need to change this one from number to character. So shipwrecks dollar canmore. We're going to feed it in as dot character and put in shipwrecks dollar canmore run that line of code and we've now got a character so that's good that's going to help us back to our canmore website and here the first part of the url is always fixed so up until we see this number appearing we're going to copy we're going to take this back to our r code we are going to say that we want to set up a new column. So we're going to call it shipwrecks dollar canmore URL. And to create the column, all we're doing is pasting two things together. So we put paste zero because we don't want to inadvertently have any spaces. And then all we do is double quote marks, insert the start of the URL do a comma. We've put in the second part of the URL, which is shipwrecks dollar and then select Canmore. Then press run. And we have our Canmore URLs created. So if we go to shipwrecks again, you can see now how this is made up. So yes, it looks like we've got our code running. Our data set contains over 23,000 rows and our map will not be able to cope with taking in that many data points. So at this stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter down the amount of data points which I want to plot on a map. I'm going to pick an area at random. So feel free to pick whatever area you wish to see on the map. To enable me to use the filter function, I am going to load in an additional package. So up at the top, we are doing library. 
bracket and we're going to bring in Dippler. Press return to load the package. Down to the bottom of code and here I'm going to type in shipwrecks, our data set, and I'm saying that I'm going to reduce it. So I'm going to filter, open brackets, then shipwrecks, comma. I'm going to take longitude where it's greater than minus two. Latitude is greater than 57, but where it is also less than 57.5. And if you're wondering why I know it's minus two and 57, etc., if you go back across to shipwrecks and just have a general look in your latitude and longitude column, you'll start seeing the type of range here that's appearing run the code and as you can see across in the environment section I now have 743 rows so that's a bit more manageable for my map I'm happy enough with that. As we now know that our code runs let's transfer it back across to our app. We need to remember that we've added in two new packages so let's just copy the two packages across and put them underneath leaflet and then I go back here and I'm going to copy everything underneath shipwrecks. Bring it back in and put it beneath our code. At this point I'm going to run my app again in case I come up with any unexpected errors. But remember we've not yet set up a map so nothing should appear on our app. That's good, our app has loaded. Let's close it. We are getting there. We've now done step one and step two of the slide which I showed previously. So we've dealt with all the data side of it. All we now need to do is create our map and plot our data points on it. Let's keep going. Let's now tell our app to display a map. So if we go down to the UI section and underneath where we have got our title panel, type as a comment, display map on screen and to do that we need to have leaflet output and what we want to output is a map and we need to give our map a name. I'm going to call my map locations so into double quote marks I type locations. In the server section we need to set up the map and tell it to plot the data points. We type in output dollar locations. We want to output our map. We called it locations. And then we want to feed in, we want to render leaflet because we want to render a map curly brackets and I'm going to insert a couple of rows of space just to make my code easier to read. Put in a comment saying set up an empty map. To do that we put in our map name locations, feed in leaflet into the brackets. We put the data which we were going to feed in eventually which is shipwrecks that's what our data is called. Then onto our map as well. We need to add tiles and onto locations. Okay. So remember this is an empty map. We've not yet told it to put the dots onto the map. But at this point, let's check to make sure that we have a map appearing. So we'll run our app. And yes, we have an empty map. All we have to now do is put the dots onto the map. So that's our last step. Let's close our map. And back in our server section underneath the add tiles, I'm going to put in another comment, which is to put markers onto the map. And we have to put them onto our map called locations and feed in, add markers. Again, we have to say the name of our map 
And what we need to tell it is where in our data frame longitude can be found and where latitude can be found. LNG equals tilde and put in longitude, comma, and then lat, L-A-T equals tilde latitude. Hopefully when you run your app, you'll have your dots on the map. Ta-da, there's your map with the different markers on it. If you hover over one of the markers, you will see that it tells us nothing about what it's actually plotting. And it would be helpful to know the name of the ship. What I'm going to do is create a pop-up such that when you click on the marker, it comes up with the name of the ship, a redirect available to Wikidata and a redirect available to Camor's website. So let's do that now. So back in our add markers code, after latitude, do a comma, pop up, equals, paste, and then we have our brackets. In between double quotes, I'm going to type ship, colon, come outside my double quotes, put a comma, and then tell it where in the data set to find our ship name. So we go shipwrecks, dollar, and our ship name is in our ship label column. So we select that, comma. In my pop-up, I want it to kind of say ship, then the Wikidata URL in a new row, and then beneath that, the Canmore URL in a new row. And to do that, I'm going to bring in some HTML code, both to allow the new rows and also for helping with the presentation of the URLs. To make this easier for you to see, I'm just going to press return here to go onto a new row, double quote marks, and we're going to put our HTML code in here for a break. Angle bracket, BR, close angle bracket, comma, we're going to set up the Wikidata row. So open double quote marks, Wikidata, colon, come outside our double quote marks and press a comma. We are going to put in our reference and this is where it gets a bit tricky so please bear with me. We are going to put in open single quotes, open angle bracket, a space href equals, then we've got our closing single quote, a comma, then we need to bring in our um, column which has our URL in it which is shipwrecks and it's the ship column which contains our Wikidata URL, comma, then single quote marks again and then our closing angle bracket because we've opened here we need to close here, comma. Then we need to say the words which we want people to click on to redirect. So I'm just going to keep it simple and type click here, comma. Then we need a single quote opening again. Angle bracket, black slash A, close our angle bracket. Because we opened A here, we need to close A off here. That should set up the Wikidata row, but we need to do the same for Canmore. To do that, I'm just going to go back up to where I set up the BR. I'm going to copy it. After my closing quote for my A, I'm going to put a comma, space, post in the code. So I've got another break line. I'm going to change Wikidata to say Canmore. And after href, this time I don't want to go to the ship column to find the URL. I need to go to the Canmore URL column to find the URL. I'm happy leaving it saying click here. So that hopefully should be our code done. Let's see if it's worked. Run the app. And if you click on any of the markers, you should see the name of the ship along with a Wikidata link and a Canmore link. So let's check that these work. So if we click on click here, we should end up on a Wikidata page. 
and we do. Let's go back to our map and check that if we click on the Canmore link that it also works. So Canmore, click here. And there we go, we've got the Teresa Boyle appearing on Canmore's website. So it all works. Good for us. One other point uh, to note is that if you find this a bit hard to read, what you can do or your user can do is click up here, open in browser. And as you can see, a new tab opens with our shipwrecks. We can move it about. There is so much more you can do with Leaflet. So feel free to have a play around with it. You can change the size of this area, etc. But in the meantime, I think we are done. If you do use location data from Wikidata in an app, I would be really interested to hear in the comments what you have used the data for. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to hear more from me, please click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.